Hi guys, welcome to this video looking at the Harbour process. Nice and simply, the Harbour process is the reaction between nitrogen, N2, and hydrogen, H2, to form ammonia, NH3, which when balanced looks like this. However, what is unique about the Harbour process is that it's a reversible reaction, and what that means is the forward reaction is occurring where nitrogen and hydrogen are reacting to form ammonia, but the backwards reaction is also occurring at the same time so ammonia is breaking down into nitrogen and hydrogen. Now the whole point of the Harbour process is to make ammonia, and the reason that we want that is to make fertilisers, so naturally you want to get as high a yield and as high amount of ammonia as possible. So what scientists have to do is try and find a way to speed up the reaction, whilst getting as big a yield as possible, because what they want is lots of it and as quickly as possible. Now this becomes a little bit more complicated because it's a reversible reaction. If it wasn't, we would just be able to increase the temperature, concentration and pressure, and we would get our ammonia nice and quickly. So what we need to do is look at moving the equilibrium as close to our products as possible so that we get as much ammonia as possible. This is all to do with dynamic equilibrium, which states that in a closed system, which means the products can't escape and nothing can enter either, the forwards and backwards reactions still happen they're happening at the same rate, meaning that the concentrations do not change. Now there are four ways that you can affect the equilibrium, and that is to increase the temperature, the pressure, the concentration of your reactants, and to add a catalyst. Now what will happen is all of these ways will get you to an equilibrium quicker, but they don't necessarily all mean that you will get a high yield of ammonia. So what we're going to do now is go on to each of those four different things and explain how they affect equilibrium. If we start off with increasing the temperature then. Now if you increase the temperature, equilibrium moves towards the endothermic reaction. So for the Harbour process, the forward reaction is exothermic, which means it gives out heat, and then the backwards reaction is endothermic, which means it takes in heat. This means that if you increase the temperature, it favours the endothermic, the backwards reaction. So there's going to be more reactants, more nitrogen and hydrogen, and therefore less products, less ammonia. So we have less yield at higher temperatures. We do, however, have a fast rate of reaction. So in other words, we're going to get a small amount of product, but we're going to get it nice and quickly. So what we have to do is compromise, and we go for 450 degrees, which is a compromise between the speed of getting it and the yield that we actually get. Okay, if we move on to pressure now. By increasing the pressure, Effectively what you're doing is keeping the same amount of particles but in a smaller space, as you can see here. So what that means is when those particles move around, there's less space for them, so they're more likely to collide with each other, to bump into each other. This means that there's going to be more collisions per second, more frequent collisions, and more reactions occurring. So what will happen is it will favour the side with the least amount of molecules. Now in the Harbour process, you can see here from the balanced equation, we have four molecules on the left with one nitrogen and three hydrogen molecules, but on the right we have two molecules, our two NH3 molecules. So it's going to favour the right hand side, our products. So by increasing the pressure, we get a higher yield of ammonia, which is great. However, the more pressure, the more cost it is to produce something that's going to contain it and build that pressure up. So we go again with a compromise, which in this case is 200 atmospheres, which is a compromise between cost and yield. Moving on to concentration then, if you increase the concentration of your reactants, what you are doing is putting more hydrogen and nitrogen molecules into the same volume. And what this means is there will be more frequent collisions. If there are more frequent collisions between your particles, it means there's more reactions occurring, so you are going to move the equilibrium to the right and increase the amount of ammonia made. This will also increase the rate of reaction, therefore you will be getting a higher yield and getting it quicker which is a win-win. And then finally, if we have a look at a catalyst, we use an iron catalyst in the Harbour process. A catalyst is something that speeds up the rate of reaction, but remains chemically unchanged at the end, so it doesn't get used up, it's not actually part of the reaction. It does this by lowering the activation energy, which is the energy required for any collision to be successful. So therefore, if more collisions are successful, it's going to speed up your rate of reaction. The one thing to note here though is it doesn't affect equilibrium in any way, it doesn't shift it to the left or the right, but you will be getting your ammonia produced much quicker. 
And that really is everything you need to know about the Harbour process. I have got four questions for you to have a go at here, so what I'd like you to do is pause the video, have a go at each of the four of them, and then we'll see how you've done in a minute. Okay, let's go through. So the first question, identify four ways to speed up equilibrium. Number one, increasing the temperature. Number two, increasing the pressure. Number three, increasing the concentration. And number four, using a catalyst. So one mark for each of those. Question two, writing the balanced equation for the formation of ammonia. Start off with one mark for your left-hand side, nitrogen N2, hydrogen H2. That gets you your first mark. Then your second mark for the right-hand side, and remembering that ammonia is NH3. And then your third mark for balancing. I always say go for the big odd unbalanced number, which is our NH3. Double that first. That gives me two nitrogens on both sides and six hydrogens on the right. So I need to triple my hydrogens on the left. And therefore, I am balanced for my third mark. Question three, what are the conditions for the harbour process? Well, you want a temperature of 450 degrees C, a pressure of 200 atmospheres, and an iron catalyst. That's your three marks for that one. I wouldn't mention about concentration here, because there's no set condition. Obviously, a high concentration is better, but these are the three they're looking for. Let's go through the big six marker then. What happens if you increase the temperature, concentration and pressure? We'll start off with temperature. The backwards reaction is endothermic, it's going to get you a mark. So if you increase the temperature, it will give a lower yield of ammonia, it's going to get you your second mark. And then, but also saying it will have a faster rate of reaction is also something that will give you a mark. So by saying 450 degrees C is a compromise between rate and yield, that's another marking point. If we move on to pressure, Increasing the pressure favours the products or ammonia, so that's going to get you a mark for saying that, because there are less molecules on the right hand side, that's also going to get you a mark. It's then about saying 200 atmospheres is a compromise between your yield and the cost of making the equipment. And then finally, increasing the concentration of reactants means more frequent collisions, which will get you a mark, giving a higher rate of reaction, getting you your final mark. Now you will notice there are way more than six marking points here. Any six of the ones we've talked about will get you six out of six. So how did you get on? Hopefully you did well and hopefully this video has helped. I have got a review question for you, which feel free to have a go at if you want to. If you want to answer it, put your answer in the comments down below and I'll tell you if you're right. Hi guys, hopefully you found the video useful. If you did, please click on like and please subscribe to my channel. If you've already done that, please share with your friends, share with your teachers, any way that's going to help me. I've also got a website with loads of videos that can help you and there's also my latest video appearing on the screen now. Thanks for watching.